what would the perfect innovation be? You know what, for us, it would be something that already has a prototype built where you can actually see it working and then something that has mass market appeal because those are the people who are going to pay for it. You know, you can't go to these niche markets and expect to make a huge windfall, which is what we as investors hope to be doing. You know, we have stockholders that, you know, they're hoping that they see the next Google or they see the next, I don't know, the next Ford or something like that. They want a true innovation, a true breakthrough in something that makes sense for the whole world, not just a couple of people. So definitely having something already ready to show us. And then also having an idea of, well, how are we, how is this economically viable? Have you already done the test to say, well, it actually is cheaper for consumers than regular oil and natural gas? Have you figured out, well, how are you going to get it to people? That's the stuff that's important. Well, this one's kind of semi-unrelated, but... But, um, you know, a number of people lately have been kicking around radio show ideas. And in, this, in the context of this particular idea, the challenge that all of them have faced and none of them have solved has been market research. And I think on the innovator side, market research is almost impossible. You know, a lot of it costs money to buy the reports, and they don't know where to buy them, they don't know how to read them or what they mean. Is that a service that, that your firm provides? Um, actually, yes. That's something that I've been put in charge of at the firm, is finding the right physicists, scientists, chemists, whoever we need, and to bring them onto the project. And you're right, that's something that the inventors don't necessarily think of. They're just saying, well, look, I've built it, it works. I don't really know why. I don't really understand the mechanics, or at least the physics behind it, or the chemistry behind it. But I know it works. Look, this is what it does. So then at that point, we take it. And a lot of times, the public doesn't care how it works. But for it to get through safety t tests and stuff like that, you actually do have to have an understanding. So yes, that's something that we put money into. That's part of the investment. Hmm. Interesting. You know, most of the technologies that I've reported on are high risk, and so it's almost difficult to find, I guess, the, the lower risk um, inventions that, that haven't already been kind of gobbled up by another firm. And uh, are, are you having the same issue? It's difficult to find what's within the risk range that you're looking for? Um, yeah, that's, that's always an issue, and a lot of times, a lot of times it's the inventors that they, they really make it difficult on us. Now, do, so, you think, do you think that personality modifies the risk assessment? Yes, yes. If they're difficult to work with, we basically say, look, we are having, and we've run into this before, we're having so much trouble with these people, we can go down the street and make this investment and these people get it, and we can make the same amount of money. But we really like this invention. We think it's really neat. And the inventor's not that bad. He just doesn't, doesn't understand where we're coming from, and he's not willing to work with us. So, you know, if you look at it through our eyes, why wouldn't we put our money somewhere that we know it's not going to take so much heartache and so much difficulty to get anything done? Yeah, absolutely. Where, uh, from what you've seen at uh, Tesla Tech and from what you've been uh, researching on your own, well, what do you see as the most uh, viable future as far as investment is concerned? Um, I guess there's a lot of talk in the mainstream about fuel cells and ethanol. I don't think either of those are going to be as viable as hydrogen. I'm, from the research I've done, it's hydrogen all the way for me. What about like a water, a water-based fuel cell, like uh, hydrogen on demand? Oh, definitely, because that's hydrogen-based. That you know, it's you're you're building it right then. It's just getting to the efficiency and the economic viability because it costs money to split that water into the hydrogen and oxygen. It, my impression has been that the, just the overall amount of money being spent on this has declined, and that it's also been harder to raise capital. I, does the, the amount of capital also decrease? Are people being asked to do more with less? Uh, yeah, they definitely are. But the investments have been on the rise for the past few years. Um, obviously, after the crash, it went down for three or four years, but it's been steadily rising. But the venture capitalists learned a lot. The private equity people learned a lot over those years, and they're not trying to make those same mistakes. Investors learned a lot over those years. So you're not going to see the same kind of, you know, craziness, the same kind of crazy valuations, everybody saying, oh, I'm going to IPO. You can't even IPO very easily anymore. 
not very many people are doing it because it's so difficult with the new laws. So while investments are on the rise, you don't see as many ridiculous investments. They're smarter. Well, do you think the dot-com shakeup has, has shaken out some of the, I don't know what you'd call it, almost the, the pretend technologies? I mean, in IT, we had some really great examples, companies that didn't know the fundamentals but were able to do a good PowerPoint presentation and got funding. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's the same in energy? Or? Definitely. I know that even in my partnership that uh, we're spending a lot more money on due diligence. We're spending a lot more time. We're not, say, you know, if you've ever heard the term hotboxed, you know, it, that doesn't happen anymore where people are like, oh, you know, we've got 10 investors looking at this, you have to sign right now, whatever. We don't do that anymore. It's like, fine, let them have it. If we can't do our due diligence properly and make sure that the technology is viable, we don't want it. Yeah. Um, for me, I've actually really enjoyed being in the alternative energy side of things because, you know, I've worked with Web 2.0, I've worked with software, I've worked in other, and that stuff, you know, First of all, it kind of bores me personally. But second, I feel with alternative energy that I can actually make some type of difference in the world. And I know that's that might sound cheesy, but it's it's just so much more important if I can make investments in something that might mean something for mankind other than, oh, hey, cool, look at the newest application. Just that doesn't excite me.